that. The Sheffield Gang Wars, or the Sheffield Gang Troubles as it was known back in the 20s when it happened, it's only the book that made it into the snappy title The Sheffield Gang Wars, came about through feuds between two rival gangs, the Mooney Gang and the Park Brigade, over the rights, the profits, to a pitch and toss ring at Sky Edge. Pitch and toss, an illegal form of gambling. Primitive form of gambling, but very, very lucrative because they took a tax on it. They fell out. There were slashings, knifings, stabbings, shootings, sieges of houses. Um, the police frequently called out to disturbances, men injured, shot. The magistrates did very little to stop it. They didn't seem interested, the city council weren't interested, and it escalated. It escalated so much that in April 1925 a man called William Plummer, who had nothing to do with gangs, was murdered at Norfolk Bridge. Two men, two brothers, Lawrence and Wilfred Fowler, were hanged for his murder. Everybody in Sheffield, or most people, many people in Sheffield thought that they were not the guilty parties. And they also thought that one of the gang leaders, Sam Garvin, who led the Park Brigade, that he had far, far more to do with the guilt of it all than they had. But Sam Garvin was acquitted, he established an alibi. The authorities realised that something had to be done and done quickly and formed the Flying Squad, a four-man team of large policemen who took the violence to the gangs and effectively that stamps it right. out. I think in a way what happened in Sheffield in the 1920s, the way the Flying Squad, the way the police tackled the Mooney and the Garvin gangs and stamped them out, I think it, that serves as a blueprint for how to beat gangs. The only problem is that you didn't have a human rights act back then. You didn't have sharp lawyers who will take things to the end of the end. There was a lot of compliance with the authorities, I guess, within the legal profession back then. The Fowler brothers were scapegoats, that's why they were executed. But at the same time, there was evidence against them. You've got to have evidence, you couldn't, they couldn't just hang them without that. But I think the blueprint for beating the gangs began with what the Flying Squad did under the Chief Constable Hall Dalwood, uh, consolidated by Sir Percy Silito, who came in in 1926, and Silito made his name in Sheffield, went on to be head of the police in Glasgow and then MI5. That's where people could look nowadays at ways in which what they... I think perhaps the police could look at what they could take out of what happened in the 1920s. Obviously, they can't go as far.